we're leaving the ghost town of Rochester. My mouth is full. I'm eating pumpkin loaf. I want to show you guys how... Excuse me. How rough this road is. It's a rough road. We're bouncing up and down. You know, all around, left and right. This is a type of world that these pioneers lived. It wasn't easy. Imagine they had to take horses and oxes through this. We've seen wild horses out here. We visited the ghost town of Rochester. We hiked along red cliffs, gleaming in the sunset. We visited archaeological ancient sites. And now we're heading home. And this is our first major investigation in the new year of 2012. And we always try every, every January we come on out. Every January, every year, and we try to do a big investigation to welcome the new year in. And this was it. And even though we visited two places, these two places, I have to say, are vast. World in itself. A world away from a world. As you can see, for it looks like for 100 miles, rolling hills, mountains, cliffs, rock formations, caves. The road splits here, and you have an old corral. Oh, actually, this is this is right here a mine. And I don't know if there's like metal when you go in about 10 feet, so I'm not going to waste my time going. It's about 300 feet back. You can't see it because my window was closed. But you can see the barbed wire when you approach. They have a mine back there. And I was I wanted to go in a mine, but, you know, every time you seem to go in 10 feet, it's barred off. And they're, I mean, they're trying to keep the public out, but at the same time, people like me need to get in. So we didn't really do any subterranean exploring as I wanted. That was the one thing I wanted to do is go underground. I love to go underground. That's a world in a world in itself. But anyways, we're heading out out of here, and I just want to thank our viewers for the people who, you know, they say, hey, I viewed your footage, it was creepy, it was intense. I want to thank those people who do view the, my footage, and they try to, they, they love our videos for what they are. Nothing added like these, like these shows, you have all this, what I'd say, drama, and, and uh, here's a split right here. They try to hype up the ratings, but it is what it is when we film. This is what we're doing. And, uh, you know, it's kind of funny today because I think I had a few bloopers I filmed while climbing. Like, I dro the camera was hanging on my wrist, and here I am on a 10-foot cliff, and I'm talking, and the rocks are crumbling. I'm thinking, man, I could fall to my death, and here I am filming. So we definitely, this is a real deal, and uh, we're going to build a team off of that. So that in the future, people, good people, people who are meant to be a deep part of the paranormal and ghost society for a long, on a long-term basis, are going to come together so that they don't have to miss adventures like these. Life was hard out here. Imagine being out here in the middle of nowhere, having a candle lit in your cabin, and the snow is coming in, and it's summer at the harsh desert and knowing that at one time red hair giants roam this great basin and would eat you this is the thing about nightmares are made of and today we off-roaded for miles upon miles my if you look my gas gauge we're on e man i got i have barely enough to make it in the town get some gas and hopefully luck will be on our side for all the great things we did today. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's been a great adventure. I, I would never take it back. This is like, like you could remember this the rest of your life, practically. That's how great and fun we had. And there was some supernatural activity. It was mild, let's put it, but a few readings, a few odd noises I couldn't explain. I don't know. It really doesn't matter. These energies will continue to be here for another thousand years. The mines, the ghost towns, sometimes it's right time, right place. 
we'll review the EVP, we'll review the videos, we'll put them on YouTube, we'll put the EVPs on our website along with team photos, scenic photos, the history to these locations. We're, we're going to try to give it to you guys all. Uh, we're reaching almost a thousand investigations in our archives. Very soon I'll be approaching 1,000, man, and uh, that's playing in the big leagues, I'd at least say. And uh, to be out here, you have to have some know-how. This is the Wild West, and we are playing in the big leagues. When you come out here 20, 30 miles in the middle of nowhere, m mountains, wild animals moving in the brush, and we're sitting out here, and we're having a friggin' moonlit picnic. Minus the moonlight. Anyways, it's time to go. I wish something would jump in front of the camera when I'm filling, but this is like my final diary. I learned a lot today, but I also I also used a lot of experience that I've developed since I've been hiking out here. And one of the things that I learned is to be thorough. You know, you look in every nook and cranny. You know, you take a road, it might be rough, but you take it. And sometimes at the end of that road is something just magnificent. And that's when that paranormal incident occurs. The EMF goes off, or you have an EVP that says, Get lost, Lord Rick, you know? That's what it's about. And uh, today I seen, I climbed to a peak above the Great Basin. I went to a place very few people get to go. And I climbed, and I did this, and I did that. And I thought to myself, you know, I, I didn't bring the water, my I cotton mouth. And I made it to the top, and I lied on a tiny little rock overlooking a cliff behind me. And I lied right next to the cliff, and I held the camera up, and I snapped a photo, and I'm like, this is living. Check us out, www.paranormalghostsociety.org. We have a few more miles to go, and we should reach a better dirt road, and... We should reach the highway. Uh, there's nothing but sagebrush and a few pines. And it is, the road is very narrow. It's very dark. I cannot see past anything to jump out. Tammy seen an animal with red eyes. There's the windmill. You cannot see it, but we just passed the windmill. We are going the right way. Uh, let's keep our fingers crossed we can make it out and that we don't get abducted. Because speaking of abducted, a lot of people came up missing here. And I'm not just a paranormal investigator. I'm a guy that, you know, I will look into other things, too. People's disappearances because, you know, their ghost can communicate with me. So people have come up missing. And what was creepy tonight is I found a pair of glasses near a hole in a mine, next to a mine. Just a deep hole in a pair of glasses. Sure, maybe somebody dropped them. But you always ask yourself in the back of your head, what if? Because the police feel that the, the abductees or the people who are abducted that disappeared around here, they feel that there, it could be linked to them going into the wilderness getting lost. Well, this wilderness will kill you. Yes, it will kill you. But it will also, at the same time, there are deep holes, mines, caves, and uh, a lot of places where somebody could lie in a sagebrush and never be found much like these overgrown ghost towns like Rochester. Anyways, thank you for viewing our videos. This is Lord Rick, also known as Angel of Nine Nights.